Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. Today I'm down here in our mechanical room and I am installing a brand new breaker panel. This is going to be our off-grid panel or our critical loads panel, whatever you want to call it. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to take our important circuits out of our main panel. We're going to move them over to here. We're going to power those up with solar. That way when the power goes out, this panel will go dead, but this panel will stay going. So the circuits we plan on moving is going to be our refrigerator, our freezer, we're going to move a couple of lights, a few outlets, our microwave, and then we have an on-demand propane hot water heater. It doesn't take a lot of electricity, but it'll allow us to still have hot water. So when the, uh, when the power goes out, we'll still have all the important things that we need. So I've already been working out here for a few hours today, and most of that time was spent getting the wall covered up. This was the last stud wall, last unfinished wall in our mechanical room. The rest of the mechanical room is already all covered up with wood. And that gave us a nice solid surface to mount everything to, especially like in the future, because you never know what next year holds. I may have more stuff to mount on here. So at least we have a nice solid surface for today and for anything we add later on. So I do have one more thing to mount on the wall and that is a transfer switch. And this allows you to switch between two power sources. So basically we're gonna be able to have this panel on solar. And if anything happens, we can actually switch this back to the grid if needed. So say you got rain for a few days, you don't have enough solar power, we can always switch this back to the grid if needed. And you always wanna have that ability, just in case something goes wrong, that you have the choice between grid or solar. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this transfer switch mounted on the wall. And then we've got conduits to run between these three panels. And then we can finally start getting this wired up. All right, I got the transfer switch mounted and I got the conduits between the panels. So the next thing I can do is start wiring this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the transfer switch, get it wired up first. All right, we're gonna add a breaker to send power to the transfer switch. So this is a 100 amp transfer switch and we're only gonna feed it with 30 amps right now. Later when our permanent system in, we'll we'll upsize the wire and add more power. But right now it's just going to be 30 amps. So the solar power is going to come in through this generator inlet. For now, we're going to use the EcoFlows. Later on, it'll be a permanent system out in our pole barn. All right, our transfer switch is wired up. So the top is the grid power, bottom is the solar power, the middle is the output that goes over to our panel. Our neutrals are tied together on this side, and then you can see we've got our panel bonded to ground. So you can see with the lever up, we're on grid power, and when we pull the lever down, we're on solar power. So now I've got a total of eight circuits in this panel that I'm going to move over to that panel. And the wires are not going to be long enough, of course, to reach over there. So I'm just going to splice on a new wire with the wire nut and take it over and land it in that panel. And uh, hopefully this doesn't take very long. We can get those on solar. So I've got all eight circuits moved over into this panel now. You can see all the extra wire nuts in here as we spliced into the wire and ran it over here. It does make the, the panel get a little bit fuller and it's already full because of my energy monitor. You can see all these white things in here. That's the energy monitor. I've been monitoring our power usage for the last six weeks or so. So I know exactly how much power each one of these circuits uses. And when I put them in here, I tried to put them in here balanced. So 
the way this breaker panel is laid out, the first row is phase one, the second row is phase two, and then it's phase one, phase two, and it just alternates down your panel. So when I put these in here, phase one should be running about two kilowatt hours a day, and phase two should be running about two kilowatt hours a day. So the loads are balanced between both phases, and since I'm using the EcoFlow Delta Pros right now to power this, it's gonna help guarantee that those get drained at basically the same speed. So hopefully, if everything all works out, um, I'm using about 65 maybe percent of the battery a day, and hopefully that will recharge every day and continue to work. We're just gonna have to wait and see. So right now we are on the grid for this panel. So before we switch it over to solar, I need to go, I need to go fix our solar panels. We've got too many solar panels together and we actually have too much voltage for the EcoFlows. So we're gonna rearrange that a little bit and get it down to a good operating voltage. And then once we get that done, the EcoFlows should charge properly every day and then we should be able to power this with solar. So originally I had two sets of four in an array and that ended up being too much voltage so i could only run three of these panels so i'm going to take this fourth panel out in each one of these sets i'm going to replace it with a 200 watt panel these are 315 we're going to replace it with a smaller panel it's going to be imbalanced but it's still going to end up being more power than what we have with three panels You can see these are a lot smaller. The way the bottoms are still matching up. I don't think that looks bad. So when you put solar panels in series like this, the voltage adds up. And even though this is imbalanced, the voltage is still gonna add up. The only thing that changes is it's only gonna run at the lowest amperage. And uh, this panel is actually higher amperage and these are lower. So these are gonna still act exactly the same. And this one, instead of being 200 watts, is gonna act like 175 watts instead. So the good thing is, is we're only, you know, really affecting this panel, making it run less efficient. So before an array of three was 945 watts. And now that we're adding this on here, it's gonna be 1120 watts. So just trying to maximize. The problem is, is my panels are too low of amperage. I really needed higher amperage panels and then that would cause me to have lower voltage. And then I wouldn't have maxed out the voltage like I did. The Heco flows are definitely back there in the dark now that I've got this wall covered up. I'm gonna go ahead and get them plugged in here. So now I gotta turn on the double voltage hub to get to 240. All right, they're linked up. They're both 100% charged. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and switch it from grid to solar. There we go. So what we got now. Well, it doesn't look like we're using much power right now. That one's only got 38 watts. That one's got 85 watts. So the circuits I ended up putting in this panel right now, this is gonna get a lot more uh, circuits in here once we have our permanent system. But uh, right now it is the microwave, the refrigerator, the freezer, the living room outlets, uh, the master bathroom so we can get ready in the morning, the on-demand propane hot water heater so we can have hot showers, the first floor lights, and then the basement lights. So I think that's pretty much the important things that at least get us by through most of our power outages that we have. Plus, um, this is a small enough load that hopefully the EcoFlows will 
be able to continuously run them without being charged by the grid. We're just gonna have to wait and see, but that's what we're testing now. So it's 7.15 in the morning. We've already got sunlight on the panels and we're starting to charge back up. So one of the Delta Pros got down to 50% overnight. The other one got down to about 35%, which is a lot lower than what I had expected, especially from previous calculations. So I ended up, I got into my Emporia energy monitor to see what was using all that power. So when I pulled up yesterday's usage, I could see that our deep freeze pulled a lot of power. And I've had that off. I've had that off for like almost two days for many hours while I have rewired the main panel and rewired the off-grid panel. Um, There's a lot of times I had the complete house turned off. So I think what's happening is a lot of that food, it's just taking a lot more energy to get that food back down to the temperature. So I'm hoping that's what the power usage is on the freezer. It's definitely used more. And then the other thing was, it was Saturday night, we actually lounged around, watched a lot of TV. So uh, we ran the TV quite a bit longer than what we typically would have. And those are both on that Delta Pro that was drained down to 35%. So uh, hopefully that freezer will even out, but uh, we're just gonna give it some time. We'll give us a few days and we'll see how this does over a period of days because it looks like today's gonna be another sunny day, but I really wanna see what it's gonna do on the cloudy days. So it's 11.10 in the morning now. Both of the EcoFlows are 100% charged. One of them just finally hit 100% a couple minutes ago. So I'm not even halfway through the day. They're fully charged. It is a sunny day. But that tells me I'm wasting energy the rest of the day, right? So I could probably double the amount of batteries. Right now I've got the batteries are three times bigger than the solar array. So I could probably go, you know, maybe four, five, six times bigger than the solar array and uh, it would work out for getting everything charged on a sunny day. And that's depending on your loads and stuff, but definitely the, the one to three ratio of solar to batteries is gonna be too small. I can see that already. So the off-grid panel has been powered up by the solar panels in the EcoFlow for four days now. So we started on Saturday. This is Wednesday at noon, and you can see it is a very cloudy day. Yesterday was a cloudy day too. I didn't think that it would charge all the way yesterday, but the sun came out for just a couple hours and it was enough to top everything off. But today it's afternoon and one of them is only back up to 41%. And if we look at it, it's taking in 273 watts and it says it's gonna take eight hours and 44 minutes to charge where there's not that much sunlight left in the day. So basically we're to the point today after four days of running we're to the point where it's not gonna fully charge on solar. So we actually need to be able to charge it off the grid, or we need to be able to just switch the panel back to the grid. So I got a light set up here so we can see the eco flows back here under the staircase. So what I ended up doing is I put an outlet in here and this is an outlet on one breaker and this is an outlet on another breaker. So then I thought I'd be able to plug these in and charge them but what I found out if you plug in one of them or both of them it doesn't really matter it will kick out the 240 volt mode and it will not let you charge these while the double voltage hub is being used so if you try to charge these you end up losing power to your inlet and then everything goes dead in our panel So if we plug these in, it takes a second. If we plug these in, this is gonna end up going into an overload and it's gonna kick off. There, it just tripped out. It took a second, but this one went into an overload. There's a red light on here, overload. Error 122. Well, I think we, we definitely found a flaw using two Delta Pros to make 240 volts. Everything works fine. Uh, it charges off a of solar fine, runs fine. We've done it for four days, but we're to the point that we need to charge it with AC because we don't have enough solar. So we'd want to chart, you know, like plug it into a generator or something and it will not charge with the output on. So I would have to turn off this output that's powering part of our house to charge it back up. So that is, that is a little bit of a flaw. Um, so you'd have to power this down. Like I said, it'd take probably three hours. 
uh, and then it'd be fully charged and you'd have to go again. So not necessarily ideal. I think it'd be better if you could still output 240 volts while you were charging them back up off of a generator. So a little bit of a flaw. Um, most people probably don't even need 240 volts anyway. I mean, all the circuits we put in here was 120, right? So we could have probably powered this all with one of these Delta Pros off of the 30 amp plug in the front. And then we still could have charged it at the same time that it was running with a generator. We wouldn't have had the same problem. The problem is all with having the 240 volt mode. So let's go ahead and just talk about how much it cost to do this setup right here. So this manual transfer switch, I bought this at Menards. I actually bought this directly off of the shelf. It was $165, 100 amp transfer switch. And then I bought this at Menards. This is actually smaller than what I want. This is a 12 space panel, 125 amps. This was around $82, $85. And I'm gonna buy one that's actually 24 spaces in it. So it's gonna be twice as big a panel. And the one I'm planning on permanently putting in here is $140. So once I put the bigger panel in here, this right here is $305. So then you have some conduit and some wire. We'll say that ended up being, a, let's just say another 150. That's probably a little much, but basically we did this setup right here for, what was that, 450 bucks? Around $450 for the off-grid panel and the transfer switch conduit and wire. So I've had a lot of people ask me about the generator inlet and the interlock. So this interlock right here, this piece of metal is like $70 for that piece of metal. And then this plug-in I think is around $62. And then of course you need the, the wire to go in between and you need a 30 amp breaker. So basically you can install this. If you're doing it yourself, you can do this, the breaker, the plug-in and the wire. You can do all that for about $200. I'm telling you, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, that is the best money you can spend is putting in a generator inlet so that you can backfeed your house with some type of generator. So we powered eight of our critical loads with the EcoFlow in this video, but that's not our permanent solution. Our, our permanent solution is we're going to build a solar power system out in our pole barn and use the roof for the solar panels and everything's going to be out at our pole barn. And then it is gonna subfeed this transfer switch, I think with about 100 amps or something close to 100 amps of power uh, to power up this panel. And then we're planning, instead of eight circuits, we're planning on a total of 16 circuits in this critical load panel. The goal is to be able to make enough power in the winter time to power up these 16 circuits, which ends up being about 50% of our power usage. So that's the goal. Now in the summertime, you, you make a lot more power in the summertime. So our goal is we're shooting at, for the winter time to be able to power this all up. But in the summertime, we'll make probably twice as much power. We may be able to power up the whole house. We'll just have to wait and see how that ends up. But our goal is our 16 critical loads. We want to be able to power those in the wintertime with solar power. And uh, we'll be starting to put that all in here in the next two to three months. So stick around. There's going to be a lot more solar stuff happening here on the property and this is just the beginning uh, just just getting our off-grid panel in here and, and this wall set up we've got the house side almost completely set up now now we got to move out to the pole barn start working out there but uh, i think that's gonna be it for this video guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one